Um, let the next talk is uh, Michael Sharp, um, also someone that uh, doesn't need any introduction. Uh, Michael Sharp is my he's a professor of mathematics at the uh, University of California, San Diego, and um, my guru for all things mathematical fonts. Um, in fact, uh, every time I have to write a script or write something that has to do with anything that's closely related to fonts, um, I would rather go to his web page and see if he has written it before. And many, many times I go there and I find something very, very interesting. It's a garden full of flowers, full of stuff to, to pick it up and use yourself. Um, with that note, Michael, um, please take the stand. Hello, everyone. Uh, my presentation today is focused on the changes I've made over the last couple of years to the new TX package and to the text packages that feed into it for math support. I've set down on this slide a number of font package names, many of which I maintain, but there are some that are either not on Tech Live, like Garamond X, and one that's not even on CTAN, Minion Pro. What is common to these font packages is that the math support files were created using the italic and bold italic letters of the text font to make the math letters, along with Greek letters from the text font if available. Other symbols were taken from UTX math appropriately sized. The resulting math support is made available as an option to the new TX package. Over the last couple of years, I've enhanced most of these packages in several ways. A, making the base fonts for the letters from which the math fonts are constructed, using the correct Unicode name in each case so that the math segments of the generated PDF files could pass validation as PDF A1B. B, making special symbols like H slash, lambda bar, Z bar, and so on from the letters in the text fonts rather than just from times. C, and this is a work in progress, make changes to the TFM files and the font outline files so that Adobe's rules for Unicode names are followed. This is done already for new TX text and X charter. I'll be saying more about this later in the talk when it comes to describing the changes to the math font. There are other text font packages that have their own math packages and they're not, uh, not just about replacing letters. New PX and new TX SF a sans serif font using UTX symbols, but they go outside the scope of this particular talk. The Garamond X package is now at end of life and will not be updated. It was never on Tech Live because of licensing issues, but an open type version is now available at the address on your screen. In any case, the EB Garamon package is a much better choice for most people who wish to use a revival of an authentic Garamond font. I recently added math support for EB Garamond as an option to new TX math, having enhanced status. There are some remaining but fairly minor concerns with the bold and bold italic faces. I corrected a number of those problems when making the math support files for new TX math. Part of the enhancement project has provided a number of new glyphs that are in the TS1 encoding but are currently missing. Currency glyphs in particular were added for using glyphs from the text font. In addition, tailor-made encoding files constructed to ensure that OTF to TFM was able to correctly encode its glyphs. There are many errors possible if you depend on the default encoding, as not all glyphs have Unicode values, and in any case, the glyph names may not be listed in the uh, Adobe glyph list. 
so you may now depend on the ability to use all the usual TS1 glyphs and the macros constructed using them. Many of the text fonts have associated theorem fonts. These are italics with upright punctuation and delimiters, which in my opinion look better in theorem statements because they don't clash with the upright punctuation and delimiter math symbols. I've started to change the way this is handled. Where I formally co-opted slanted for this use, I changed to a new text family backslash th family based on backslash th default which is sort of like uh, backslash it default but put together in the way described earlier. Finally, it's, it suffices to use patch command to change the definition of the plain theorem style replacing each occurrence of italic shape with theorem family. By far the most time-consuming part of the changes I have made was handling the details needed for ensuring that the fonts and TFMs were capable of generating PDFA compliant documents via PDF LaTeX. For the alphanumeric math glyphs, I decided to take the approach of making a new font where the glyph names were the Unicode uh, math names, copying the original math glyphs into that new font. For example, my old math italic A in regular weight was copied to a glyph named U1D434. Similar uh, constructions work then for bold italic math and for I put the upright Greek in uh, regular and bold weight into separate fonts. So the basis for making the alphanumerics came down to making four new fonts with Unicode names. Then the new fonts were used as ingredients to font install scripts for building the math fonts. My old font scripts used glyph names A, B, and so on, and gamma, and so on, and in particular, my adjustment files used those original names. Fortunately, Fontinst has a reglyph font command that allows easy transport to the new names. I've added a number of special characters, or rather character sets, uh, for some uh, groups of users. Uh, three of the example types here are one, the addition of a sharp capital S for use in German orthography. This has been an optional element of the official standard since 2017. These are easily selected in open type tech, but not yet in PDF law tech. Uh, second, I added specialized forms of the Serbian Montenegrin Cyrillic letters, mainly in italic shapes. Currently, it's realized only in X Charter and is open type only. Thirdly, I added as part of the enhancement project specialized symbols H slash, H bar, Lambda slash, and so on using the native text fonts. This is possible only because of the expanded math encodings. The simplest macro to make a fraction might use a slash and ordinary lining figures. That's simple but uninteresting and doesn't match the preformed fractions, one half, two thirds, and so on, that are available in most text fonts. To get a better match to those preformed fractions, you need to replace the slash with a fraction solidus which is more slope and projects substantially to the left and right of its bounding box. You also need numerator and denominator figures, though the, those can be manufactured artificially from lining figures. Then the first attempt you might make would likely be something uh, similar to the definition at the top of this slide. 
Even so, you might not get what you expect if your TS1 coverage is inadequate, even though you have a fraction solidus, solidus glyph. A safer strategy is to switch to text comp uh, character 47 and not rely on the text frac fraction solidus macro. Even so, the result is usually not of high quality because of uneven spacing between the figures and the fraction solidus. I've been experimenting with some other more complicated approaches and have now settled on the one that's now in use in X Charter and which I'll use on all the packages I maintain in the future. <coughs> A new command, uh, text frac with three parameters, has uh, makes use of a table of kerns between numerated digits and fraction solidus and between fraction solidus and denominated digits. The optional argument is the whole number and the remaining arguments are the numerator and the denominator of the vulgar fraction. For further customization, the kern to each side of fraction solidus is configurable by means of uh, the options for solidus and aft solidus. This would not be near, near the top of a list of important font features for most people, but there is most likely a small audience out there who does care, just as there are for some other typographic niceties. The distinctions between math families are not so simple to delineate precisely depending on factors other than shape and slope. Uh, for instance, crampness, ability to distinguish all letters and symbols from one another, visual appeal, color issues, and font contrast. I'll focus them on just shape and slope. In my opinion, a slope, a metallic slope that is, of 11 to 13 degrees is the sweet region for italic angle in math fonts. Recognizably sloped, but not having an unto not leading to untoward spacing issues alongside upright letters and symbol. Though there isn't much real difference between 11 degrees and 15 degrees, it, that becomes much more apparent when you alternate them with vertical strokes. On shapes, the first issue here is whether normal symbols are uppercase, like computer modern, or lowercase, like MN symbol or libertinus math. I find the latter much harder to read and have a distinct preference for the former. A related issue not illustrated here is the script part font problem. Those that have a severe italic angle, as do most, take up a great deal of space on the line, and this is most noticeable in two-column mode. Excessive tails are also a problem, and for the same reason. New TX Math now includes both the script alphabet and a more upright version with shorter tails that, in my opinion, works better beside other math symbols. A further aside, lowercase script are very nice symbols, but appear to have no canonical usage. A great pity. Here is a quick rundown of some metric comparisons between a number of math packages. The first four columns compare the cap heights, x heights, and the vertical stem widths of the text font parts. And the last two show the math axis and the default line width. Line width data shows that Computer Modern, Lucida, and Libertinus have very fine lines, Styx has the thickest lines, and Fourier and New TX or Math are in the middle. The V-stem data shows that the Fourier has uppercase stems 10% lighter than times, and lowercase stems about the same as times. It does, however, appear darker on the screen because it's rather cramped. In other respects, its metrics are quite similar to times. One of the goals of the enhancement project was to rework a number of the math families in UTX Math, expanding them to 256 slots from the former 128. This was already done for symbols and large symbols, 
where one could where one finds the extensible symbols and the next target was letters where one finds math italic letters under the encoding OML. For this I kept the first 128 slots unchanged so the macros which need OML encoded characters will not fail. The new 128 slots and those freed up in letters A would be used for new math alphabets without the need to load external packages that use up one or more of the precious 16 math font families allowed under traditional tech. Much of the additional space in letters is used for additional script alphabets, while the space freed up in letters A is used for an additional blackboard bold alphabet. This means that math script macro is now always available and its variant upright form is av available via an option to UTX math. The additional alphabets are not in traditional slots and require a new, rather complex math macro with seven arguments, in terms of which you may define new math alphabets by a code like that on the slide. The arguments here are the string of characters you wish to output using that alphabet, the slots where uppercase and lowercase start, the slots where the dotless i and dotless j, the slot where figures start, and the name of the math family to choose this from. And in all cases, an empty argument signifies that there is no such glyph in the font. The examples on this slide illustrate the problem I was trying to address, as well as showing some of its limitations. The general principle is that you can include more than one character in the argument of a blackboard bold or script command if you don't include active characters like the underscore and hat in math mode. In the first example, the argument is the first VV math BB, which was the variant form of math BB defined on the previous slide. In the expression 1 plus r, it outputs 1 and r as blackboard bold, but passes the plus symbol to be handled by normal math mode means. The second example shows the output from math script when the upright script option to new TX is enforced. Without that option, very slanted glyphs would be used. The only control sequences recognized by these macros are IMath and JMath, which it handles appropriately, as long as there are such blackboard bold characters defined. Otherwise, it passes uh, them along for, for processing by LaTeX. Symbols outside the alphanumeric range are also passed along, along with other unavailable symbols. Note the Greek letters are not handled, but are passed along, and in this instance, uh, J math is output as blackboard bold. The fractor alphabet that used to be in UTX math was not really suited to fonts like Times, seeming to have been designed for lighter math fonts such as Computer Modern. As part of my enhancement project, I worked on the fractor symbols, making them slightly taller and noticeably thicker in the horizontal direction. And the chart here shows a comparison between the old version, the new version, and the same glyphs with sticks. Uh, the first is at normal size and then magnified by a factor of five. It does appear to me that the new fractor is just a bit lighter than the Styx fractor, but is less shapely. One of the major changes in the last couple of years has been modifying the spacing of a number of letter combinations to try to do something about the fact that the letters that have long uh, tails on the left often collide with uh, baseline symbols that are obese on the right. And in trying to do that, 
uh, I was uh, essentially adding some space to the right of the obese symbols and adding some space to the left of the long-tailed symbols. Well, of course, what happens as a result of doing that is now subscripts are a problem. There is too much space then uh, with those long tail letters when used as subscripts. And I got around this by adding it, uh, what amounts to a kerning table, for use when those letters, those long tail letters, are the first item in a subscript. Now, you can see how I uh, did this by a possibly external file, or there's an internal file that works for new TX, but maybe not so well for others. There is already in LaTeX an overwrite arrow macro, which makes an arrow accent whose length adapts to the length of the XNT, and a package ESVECT, which does much the same thing, but with a choice of arrowheads, uh, neither of these has arrows matching those in UTX math. Following some requests to correct this lack, I modified the code from the ESVECT package while continuing to use the same macro names it uses. Currently, only right pointing vectors are available, but it would surely not be hard to provide left and two sided adaptive vector accents as well. Likewise, there could, these could be extended to use the notation used by Will Feller in his great book's Introduction to Probability Theory, where he used accents composed of horizontal bars with or without vertical bars at the ends for intervals with vertical bars if the, if the end points are to be included. I'm sorry there was never became accepted notation for general use, given the overuse of parentheses and brackets for other purposes. This slide shows some other points. Uh, first, both the VV macro and overwrite arrow macro make accents that work less well in UTX math because its italic slope is larger than that in computer modern. Uh, Second, subscripts placed on vectorized items are generally badly spaced, too far to the right. Like ES vector, uh, I have a starred form that reduces uh, and moves the subscript to the left. Third, note that with the new VV macro, you can configure the separation between the arrow and the accent T. I'm too old now to abandon my PDF LaTeX babies, but I do envy what OpenType text brings to the table. There are a couple of situations that might apply here to use a number of the features of the latter without giving up on the former. Let me mention just one. It is sometimes desirable, in my opinion, to use a package I know well, that is new TX math, within a ZLaTeX document. Same with Lua LaTeX, of course. The What I've put up here is what I've found is a reasonable way to make use of the new TX math package at the same time that you use ZLaTeX for doing text processing, or perhaps not. Let's go through the top of this example. You'll notice that the first few lines are all about setting up math before starting on uh, text. This is, of course, exactly what the font spec program uh, says you should do. What's not so apparent, though, is why you should not make the first uh, part of this preamble loading new TX text. The problem is, I think, that new TX text loads the final commands about uh, what should the Roman uh, default be near the end, and that, I think, interferes with uh, later processing. So you have to replace that by 
just setting up what amounts to the temporary Roman default command that you can get by looking at the appropriate FD file. So the other issue there too is the uh, you may or may not wish to have OT1 uh, processing in there and in that case you have to put a T1 uh, font encoding command in. Yes. I'd say best to move, just move on to questions. Okay. Um, so let me see if I, um, let me process them here for a quick. Uh, Yeah. If anyone, if any one of the panelists have any questions, you should go go right ahead. Unmute yourself and ask the questions. I have one question myself, um, Michael. Um, yeah. Is how. I would expect that there is some uniformity in between the way that, uh, that the fonts are built. You know, for example, you take the two fonts which are completely different families, like say Minion Pro and, and a font coming from, uh, from the foundry in Poland. Um, can, uh, how adaptable is the framework to support one and support the other? Is it? Uh, there are, of course, problems, uh, and in many cases, you're only doing an approximation to the best match. Uh, in the case of Minion Pro, of course, you have to magnify it, and uh, you wish you had uh, a greater range of symbols to uh, to go with it, but because of the uh, the thing I was pointing out in one of the slides that UTX math actually has a, a mid range when it comes to uh, line width and also X uh, the uh, math axis, it actually adapts very well to a great range. Uh, I think the greater problem I've had in some respects is that not all math families have italic symbols that are uh, a good match or, uh, or good possibilities as math symbols. Uh -huh. They're often too easily confused with uh, Greek symbols. And of course that leads to one of the other issues that finding an appropriate Greek family uh, to match the font because text fonts, uh, at least in the free range, don't normally have Greek letters, uh, at least not a full range of Greek letters. And in the case of X Charter, I had to uh, devise a, a completely new Greek alphabet so that I could have something that looked good uh, as the, the math family to accompany Charter. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Interesting. So it's 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 a labor that starts over all over again with every new font, almost. Like. Uh yeah. Sometimes it's easy, and sometimes not easy at all. And the the time I've had to spend varies enormously. You know, sometimes it's a matter of uh, weeks, and sometimes it's a matter of months. And you know, there, it's so easy to make errors in these things that uh, I have to do many revisions. Uh -huh. And um, I have an, another question, is, which is a follow up on uh, Steve's, Steven's uh, lecture. How much work would be, I mean, no two, no two has mathematical symbology, but it doesn't have almost anything else. How much work would be to integrate those two into new TX? It may not be as bad as it sounds. I mean, doing it, I mean, 
if you're going to stick with the 256 uh, character fonts, then I think you could fairly easily copy what's in sticks, for example, where they've got a very full encoding and then change the symbols to get away from the serif style. Uh, and probably a few, a few months, probably. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Interesting. Uh, 